Hi, everybody, and welcome to another segment of AstrologyAnswers.com's Weekly Forecast. My name is Terrence Gardino. The week begins on Monday, August the 2nd, and there's a lot of activity going on, even though it's the winding down week prior to the next new moon. The next new moon is on next Sunday, August the 8th, in the sign of dynamic outgoing Leo, but I say this every month. The week prior to the new, the next new moon is when it's a time of wrapping up, bringing closure, um, resolving. Many times all that had been already resolved from the previous new moon through the full moon. And then it's just about waiting. Um, and I'm being, feeling like it's like a holding pattern. But as I always stress, this is usually, just depending on your individual horoscope, not the best week to be launching a major project because the energy is winding down and you want to wait to the following week after the new moon when the energy, overall energy is now gearing up. But let's start with Monday, August the 2nd. The moon will be in Gemini. Um, the moon sets the public tone. Gemini is all this conversation, all these ideas, a lot of conversations, a um, lot of running around and errands. It's a lot of mental busyness, a lot of talking. The moon will be in a challenging aspect to impatient Mars, however, from around 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. Pacific time. And that could be when emotionally the moon, you could jump to conclusions, you may be a little bit too irritable or impatient, but it only lasts for a couple of hours and it may not even affect your horoscope. But for but by midday Pacific time into midday tomorrow, that next day on Tuesday, pleasure seeking romantic Venus will be in harmony with liberating innovative Uranus. This favorable transit will happen twice a year. When we're talking about relationships, with Uranus, Uranus tends to represent friendships and also group activities and organizations. So this would be Monday into Tuesday, could be a very favorable time for getting involved with some type of group activity um, or joining a group um, or making new friends. But Venus is where we look to more for intimacy. And yes, Uranus can represent friendships, but when it's connected with Venus, there could be an unexpected infatuation. So depending on other factors in your chart, Monday and Tuesday, many people, if you're single and looking, could fall in love. Also on Tuesday, the first half of the day, Pacific time, that we're still under all of this um that romantic um, energy of Venus Uranus. Oh, one more thing. Venus is the planet of art, of creative expression. So it's in harmony with Uranus. You can be more innovative. You might be not the artist. If you're the artist, you could coming up with new original ideas, or you could be the audience and wanting to be really attracted to some to new art form. Now, also all day, but maybe a lot stronger as we get to around noon Pacific time into early next um, day on Wednesday, communication Mercury will be aspecting Uranus. Now, Mercury is the mind and the curiosity when it hits Uranus mentally. If we look at this mentally, Mercury can represent the nervous system. And when it's in tension with Uranus, Uranus also represents electricity or unexpected sudden events. So there could be midday, later in the day, Tuesday, into the first part of Wednesday, some, um, you have to be careful of accidents, being really anxious, a lot of nervousness. On a more positive 
Mercury is what you, it's all the mind and what you're curious about. And when it's in tension with Uranus, you might be struggling at first to learn new technology, new, you know, a new computer system, um, new software. Um, and uh, that could be jarring at first, but you stay with it, you can break through. Wednesday, the moon continues in the first part of the day, continuing in Gemini with all that intellectual mental energy. The moon by noon, the first couple of hours you know, from noon to 2 p.m. Pacific time, the moon, the emotional moon will be in harmony with optimistic expansive Jupiter. This is great for socializing. This is great for traveling um, or anything that deals with um, promotion and marketing that goes along with Jupiter. But the moon will leave Gemini, which is more this wound up uh, mental energy. And at 2.17 p.m. Pacific time, the moon enters into emotional cancer for those next two and a half days. When the moon's in cancer, we're more inclined to want to stay at home, be with family, do some cooking, do some working around the home, because cancer is all that domestic energy. But it can also be a time of when the general public seems to be a bit moody, overly emotional, re reacting overly emotional. Thursday, as the moon continues in Cancer, and there's not much going on, but from about 7 to 9 p.m. Pacific time, so a lot of people listening to this will pro could be sleeping, but this moon in, in harmony with Uranus, um, it can really bring some emotional excitement, get you out of an old rut, you know, being more interested um, in something new and different and fresh. So it could be, could be in, in from the, especially the West Coast, but even later on the East Coast of the United States, it's a Thursday evening. It's still summertime in the Northern latitudes. Could be a, an excellent evening to go out, go to dinner, go, uh, go, you know, seek out some entertainment that you haven't done before. Friday, the sun, in Leo is going to be forming a 90 degree angle to Uranus. The 90 degree angle is this angle of push, uh, pushing activity. So when the sun is in this hard angle to Uranus, now the sun will make a hard angle to Uranus four times a year. It'll make the conjunction where they're exactly together or the square, the 90 degree angle, which is happening on Friday or the opposition oppositions more um, confronting other people. But it's a good day to um, put a real spot like the sun on getting out of your rut, um, you know, reinventing yourself, really shaking things up. That's the positive. But the moon, be careful, the emotional moon and the moon in Cancer can be moody, will be in opposition or confrontation to uh, dark, compulsive Pluto from about 3 to 5 p.m. Pacific time. And that could be some emotional power struggles. And then you mix that for the whole day with Uranus and hard angle to Uranus, there could be an unexpected upset and blow up. Um, but you can channel this energy and with the sun Uranus and maybe come up with some new original ideas, um, being much more innovative. Saturday, the moon as we go into Saturday is now in fiery dynamic Leo. Um, the full, the new moon on Sunday will, is going to be in Leo. So think of it as on Saturday, we are entering the ballpark on Saturday, but the game doesn't begin until Sunday with the new moon. The new moon is when we're planting seeds of new beginnings, 
where our focus, our attention is being drawn to another area of our lives, of our horoscope. But Saturday, with the moon in Leo overall, we want to get out. It's the weekend, have fun, um, be playful, sports, children, romance, all the qualities of the Leo moon. But from about 6, 6.30 to 8, uh, 8.30 p.m. Pacific time, the moon will be opposite Saturn. So all that emotional excitement, wanting to have fun and enjoy life and get out there could be hitting a, uh, you know, a brick wall with the Saturn. Or plans could be canceled. And then it's, then what are you going to do? And it's a Saturday night and you were all dressed to go out and now there's nothing to do. Or got to be careful about any kind of, um, emotional disagreements in the early evening Pacific time on Saturday. But Sunday, whatever was causing this resistance, this blocked energy, on Sunday, it's going to begin to break free. Before I sign off, I want to remind you I'm available for a one question offer for a nominal fee to be able to request it. Go to the home page of astrologyanswers.com, click on the tab labeled advisors, scroll down till you find my name, just click on it, and then you can order for your question. So I want to thank you for tuning in. I hope to see you next week with my next segment. Until then, be safe and well.